Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 29th of April. Pro Khalistani chants echo during Canadian PM Trudeau address amid strained ties with India. Pakistan PM Shehbaz Sharif pursues new IMF loan amidst public outcry over inflation. And Bangladesh reopens schools amidst scorching heat wave. And now for all the details. Amid weakening ties with India, pro Khalistani chants were raised during the address of Canadian Wahidu Prime Minister Chikakaza, Justin Trudeau Wahidu and opposition Chikipate. leader Pierre Poilievre on the it occasion of Vesaki, which is also referred to as Khalsa Day in Canada. As Trudeau took stage for this address, this the chants of Khalistan Zindabad got louder. Trudeau assured the Sikh community that his government would do anything to safeguard their rights and freedom. The Prime Minister's address came amid brewing diplomatic tensions between India and Canada over the death of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nidjar. Relations between the two countries deteriorated after Trudeau alleged that the agents working for the Indian government were involved in the assassination of Nidjar. However, prior to the event, the Sikh community also organized a parade during which posters featuring Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar and Defence Minister Rajnath Singh were prominently displayed. The posters bore inscriptions indicating that these ministers were after the death of Nidja's killing. New Delhi has denied the accusation and has called them absurd. Nidja, who was designated a terrorist by the NIA in 2020, was shot and killed as he came out of a Gurudwara in British Columbia in June. Security forces launched a search operation this past weekend in a remote village in India's Udhampur district against suspected terrorists believed to have a recently infiltrated from neighbouring Pakistan. The operation began after a patrolling party of police and village defence guards encountered the suspected terrorist on Sunday in Basantkar. In the exchange of fire, a village defence guard member, Mohammad Sharif, was critically injured. He later succumbed to his injuries. According to a top official of the Jammu and Kashmir police, two groups of terrorists were believed to be present in the area who have recently intruded into Indian territory. The area was cordoned off and the anti-terror operation was underway till the last reports came in. We got a feeling of the attackers. After that, the area was activated. क्योंकि जो सूचना थी वो बहुत स्पेसिफिक नहीं थी अब जनरल एरिया काफी बड़ा होता है तो सभी जगह हमने एक्टिवेशन किया हमने बीडीजी को एक्टिवेशन किया और हमारी जो बीडीजी जो हमारे एसपीओ के साथ थी जो हमारे मेंबरान हैं हमारे पूरे परिवार की इन्होंने जब इलाके में गश्त की इलाके में एरिया डोमेशन एक्सेस शुरू की तो उस गश्त में आतंकवादियों ने उन पर हमला किया जवाबी कार्रवाई हमारी पार्टी ने भी की और उसमें है एक हमारा एक साथी उसमें एक शहीद हुआ है और पूरे इलाके की घेराबंदी हमने की है उसमें सर्च जारी है मूविंग ऑन पाकिस्तान प्राइम मिनिस्टर शहबाज शरीफ ड्यूरिंग अ मीटिंग विद आईएमएफ मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर क्रिस्टलीना जॉर्जिवा हैज सॉट अ न्यू आईएमएफ लोन प्रोग्राम टू रिवाइव पाकिस्तान इकोनॉमी हाउ एवर सिटीजन हैव एक्सप्रेस देर फ्रस्ट्रेशन ओवर इन्फ्लेशन एंड हाई प्राइसेज एट्रीब्यूटिंग टू देर फाइनेंशियल स्ट्रेन अ रिपोर्ट in order to put Pakistan's economy back on track, the country's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Sunday met IMF's Managing Director, Kristalina Georgieva, and discussed a new loan program as current $3 billion standby arrangement expires this month. On the sidelines of the World Economic Forum, Sharif thanked Georgieva for her support to Pakistan in securing the three billion U.S. dollars standby arrangement from IMF in 2023 that was now nearing its completion. Sharif reiterated his government's commitment to put Pakistan's economy back on track. As the IMF agreements impede growth and exasperate inflation, citizens of Pakistan have expressed anger due to the high prices of flour and pulses. 
They lamented that they are unable to afford even basic necessities such as chicken. Pakistan is facing a chronic balance of payment crisis and nearly $24 billion to repay in debt and interest over the next fiscal year, which is three times more than its central bank's foreign currency reserves. तो कीमतों के हवाले से अगर आप बात करें कीमतें आसमानों को छू रही है हम गरीब आदमी भूखा मर सकता है कुछ खा नहीं सकता एंड यूनिसेफ इन इट्स लेटेस्ट रिपोर्ट हैज स्टेटेड दैट अफगानिस्तान्स 23.7 मिलियन पीपल इंक्लूडिंग 12.3 मिलियन चिल्ड्रन आर इन द नीड ऑफ ह्यूमैनिटेरियन असिस्टेंट इन 2024 UNICEF stated that only 35% of the required 1.4 billion dollar in aid for children in Afghanistan has been secured. The report attributes the increase in poverty in Afghanistan to long-standing conflicts, climate change, economic recession and rising unemployment. According to the report, from the beginning of 2024 to date, 14,570 suspected cases and 71 deaths from measles have been recorded in Afghanistan. UNICEF says that more than 11,000 of these patients are children under 5 year old and over 6,000 measles patients are women. The organization urges its humanitarian partners to prioritize the safety of female staff in Afghanistan. Moving on. In a bid to boost ties, China on Sunday announced exempting visa fees for Nepali travelers with effect from May 1. Nepal had been requesting the northern neighbor to exempt visa fees for a long time. The decision follows an agreement reached during Nepal's Deputy Prime Minister Narayan Kaji Shrestha to China last March. This move aims to promote friendship between the two countries and facilitate mutual visits. Nepal has been waiving visa fees for Chinese nationals since 2016 and has been looking for reciprocal treatment from China. Statistics from NTB show a rising trend in Chinese tourist arrivals in 2024. In March alone, 12,093 Chinese tourists visited Nepal compared to 9,180 in February and 1,436 in January. Meanwhile, schools reopened on Sunday, the first day of the weeks in Bangladesh. despite a continuing heat wave this reopening comes despite a warning from the weather department about the temperature climbing above 40 degrees celsius in the days ahead school administration have said due to the recent holidays to mark ramadan and eid ul fitr along with the extended leave for the heat alert academic activities have been hampered we will try our best to catch up till the government provides the next directive principal of the girls school said The country's education department have said daily assemblies will not be held until further notice and the portion of school activities held outside the classroom and exposed to sunlight will be limited. However, parents are still worried about the health of their children. Na bachcha amar choto ta to age chuti hoye jay boro tar deri te chuti hoye boshe thake onek koshto mane amar basha aro dure onek koshto gorom pura gorome ashte hoy abar pura gorome jaite hoy rastay khushur gorom amar basha jatay korte hoy onek koro Amid ongoing ethnic tensions in Manipur a beacon of hope emerges with the Assam Rifle Center of Educational Excellence in Ukrul which brings together 37 girls from Meitei Kuki and Naga communities under roof for coaching to become doctors the initiative by the Assam Rifles provides shelter education and unity a message that the students see as the answer to the conflict With almost a year of ethnic clashes and sporadic violence in Manipur, a story of hope has come from the northeastern state. Students from both Metei and Kuki communities have come under one roof, pursuing their dreams to become doctors. At Assam Rifles Center of Educational Excellence in Manipur's Ukrul, 37 girls from different ethnic tribes including Meti, Kuki and Naga have been provided shelter and educational opportunities preparing them to achieve their career goals. Opened in collaboration with NIDEO, a non-governmental organization, the center is offering a ray of hope to the distressed candidates who say that unity and education are the only solutions to the conflict in the state. 
The students say that even though they belong to different tribes, they don't feel any difference there and all of them have become each other's family. In a statement, the Assam Rifles lauded the students and said the decision to join the Center of Educational Excellence is one of the most courageous steps. The girls have dared to take this step and dream, making their dreams a reality irrespective of the circumstances. The RC is committed to nurturing their courage, shaping their dreams and ensuring their success, the paramilitary force added. My education will change. What do you say about the future of Manipur? Yes, the future of Manipur is the future of Manipur. The little children belong to the future of Manipur. When they do good, they will be good. They will be positive in their mind. When we study, when we learn knowledge, then we will be good in our positive mind. Do you feel that the future of Manipur is positive in our positive mind? That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.